It's time to test Hollywood's might with adapting video games with the latest adaptation of Mortal Kombat. You fucking beauty. Mortal Kombat is an interesting property. I'm not as familiar with the game since I suck at fighting games, but I've heard bits and pieces of the lore, mainly thanks to Death Battle, and it's ripe for adaptation. I haven't seen the Paul W.S. Anderson movie in a long while, but that's become a cult favorite among people, and everything else after that? We need a strategic plan of attack. I got one! Combat time! Yeah, Mortal Kombat outside the video games kind of peaked early. Now we have a whole new reboot, and it kicks a lot of ass. The main problem Hollywood has always had with this franchise is that the games are gruesomely violent. Like, scare the shit out of parents levels of violent. But the games are also popular with teens, which means that Hollywood is always aimed at that lower age demographic to get the most money out of them. But in them doing so, they essentially neutered the franchise. More than any other fighting game, Mortal Kombat is known for blood and gore, specifically with the fatalities, and they've only gotten more gruesome as video game consoles have gotten more powerful. But the other media until recently never really incorporated that aspect, because to executives, this was a franchise for teens and children. You know, this franchise. <laughs> intended for children. I believe the most recent animated movie was one of the first to really showcase how much gore is inherent within the franchise, and now with an R rating movie that skirts on the edge of NC-17 apparently during production, we can finally see that, act that sort of viscera and violence in live action, and, that and in that regard, this movie delivers. The premise here takes most of its inspiration from the first couple of games. Outworlders on Mortal Kombat Victory 9 out of 10, and on the next one they get a free sub sandwich! And the entirety of Earthrealm. However, instead of going by the tournament rules the Elder Gods have laid out, Shang Tsung has been sending Sub-Zero to take out Earthrealm's opposition, so that he can just basically win unopposed. Now this is actually kind of a brilliant idea, and I'm surprised that uh, maybe it came up in the games, I haven't been following them for a while, but it actually kind of makes sense, and it's Kind of, like, perfect for Shang Tsung to try and circumvent the, uh, the rules because he's a villain. Because why would he follow the rules? So it's not like he's a lawful evil villain. But yeah, um, the difference here for the movie specifically is that they've added in a prophecy. For you see, prophecy foretells. Don't know who foretold the prophecy, but prophecy foretells that a warrior descended from the line of Hanzo Hazashi will lead the Earthrealm forces to victory against Outworld. Unfortunately, that descended is Cole Young, who is honestly the worst character in the whole movie. But I'll get into that. After Sub-Zero attacks Cole and his family, he seeks out Sonya Blade, who is essentially a Mortal Kombat superfan, complete with the uh, corkboard and and uh, thumbtacks and little yarns going everywhere. Um, but after a fight with Reptile, Cole and Sonya are led to the Temple of Raiden by Kano, where they meet Raiden, Liu Kang, and Kung Lao, as well as a recently disarmed Jax. The rest of the movie is the team from Earthrealm fending off Shang Tsung and his fighters, bleeding into the climax where Earthrealm's fighters go on the offensive and take out Shang Tsung's forces, ending with a tease for the official Mortal Kombat tournament next time as well as fan favorite, Johnny Cage. As I mentioned, Cole Young is my least favorite part of this movie. Him and his family feel so out of place, and the whole connection to Scorpion's bloodline feels like we should care because he's related to Mortal Kombat's Pikachu. But Cole has no personality, and this isn't to knock Louis Tan in any way. I mean, he's not great, but I doubt any actor could make this character work 
because this is essentially a player avatar made in the character creator who interacts with the actually interesting characters, but adds nothing to the plot, and is just there for the player to feel involved. Honestly, I feel like this part should have been given to Liu Kang, or Johnny Cage, since Liu Kang is generally the protagonist of the franchise, and Johnny Cage is the perfect audience avatar. Hell, Louis Ten to Shatter's star proves he could have handled the comedy if they made him Johnny Cage. So who's this new guy? Why do we have essentially a Hollywood self-insert character who only exists as a tie-in to the franchise mascot? This is some fanfic-level writing if I've ever seen it. And it's not like the and it's not like a character like Cole Young couldn't have worked, but the way he and his family are written makes them feel like they know they don't belong in this movie, but they can never acknowledge the fact that they don't belong in this movie at any point. And even from his introduction, he feel this he feels like something out of a directed video MMA movie, something like a never back down sequel or something like that. And yeah, Cole Young and his family completely weigh down the entire movie. Thankfully, everything that actually comes from the Mortal Kombat games makes up for that. Shang Tsung is played perfectly here by Chin Han, and the rest of the cast are all solid. Sonya's whole arc of her being the outsider, especially with that references to that being the case when she was in the military and her history with Jax, it's not perfect, but at least it's a character motive and an arc for her to go through. I mean, it's, any, it's more than anything Cole has to deal with. But yeah, actually that begs the question. If Sonya Blade has the better protagonist arc, why wasn't Sonya Blade the main character of this movie? Like, her arc is perfect for that of a protagonist. She's on the outside, she's been obsessing over this Mortal Kombat thing, she finally gets, she finally kills Kano and is able to become part of the team, but they respected her before then, and it's like, why, why isn't she the protagonist? Whatever. Uh, I also have to say that Josh Lawson is just hamming it up as Kano, speaking of which. He is such the perfect level of asshole, and his whole turn is basically a given if you know anything about the games, but he starts out as a fun punching bag until he gets his Arcanum, which is basically this movie's equivalent of a, of a quirk from My Hero Academia in the form of his laser, his laser eye. And after that, he becomes a genuine threat that they have to deal with. And a good foil for Sonya to fight over the last half of the movie. It kind of sucks that Liu Kang was made a supporting character in this movie because Ludi Lin does a pretty good job playing him. He's not as memorable as Robin Shell's Kang, but he's also relegated to, the, to a sidekick for Cole, the personality vacuum. The standouts, though, have to be Sub-Zero and Scorpion. Naturally, since they have the most in-universe in universe development as characters. We open with Bihan slaughtering Hazashi's family while Hazashi gets to take out the rest of the Lin Kuei assassins. And I have questions about that, but that ties into the games. Like, how exactly do you get to be rival clans between a Japanese, like, ninja clan and a Chinese... I don't know what the Chinese equivalent of ninja would be, but... Yeah, I have many questions about that, but whatever. Um, at any rate, uh, Sub-Zero is consistently the best of Shang Tsung's fighters, and then when Hazashi eventually does return as Scorpion, he and Sub-Zero have the best fight of the movie, hands down. And I knew that fight was going to be the highlight just from the trailer, and it does not disappoint. It is fantastic. Like I mentioned, the first attempts to adapt the story was always hampered down by the need to aim at younger audiences, partly because video games are often seen as a children's medium, and partly because R-rated movies have a tendency to earn less money overall than PG-13 movies because 18 and older means they lose the minors as a legitimate audience. I mean, plenty of teens go to see R-rated movies, they just don't pay for it. But uh, this time around, we see the blood and guts and people losing limbs and getting stabbed or just getting completely eviscerated. We get really good references to the fatalities, plus plenty of references to the franchise for fans. This definitely was made by people who knew about Mortal Kombat and knew what to include. Mortal Kombat 2021 is a bit of a mixed bag. The parts where the filmmakers get to showcase stuff from the games is great. And the Scorpion Sub-Zero fights are excellent. But the whole thing gets weighed down by this fanfic creation that's trying to prop up Scorpion as more than what he actually is with this stupid prophecy. Actually, come to think of it, are they trying to make Scorpion like an anti-hero? 
Because that's the whole thing. A scorpion goes to hell and becomes a servant of, I believe, Shao Kahn. Somebody. He becomes a servant, servant of somebody. He becomes a bad guy. He's a villain, I believe, in most of the games. Are they trying to, to give him the Punisher treatment where they just make him an anti-hero? I don't know how I feel about that. And I'd have to rewatch the 90s version to see which I would prefer of the two. But I still would suggest checking this out. Maybe at home on HBO Max, then in the theaters. Until next time, I'm John Bailey, and leave the OCs for the fanfics, not Hollywood adaptations. We'll